This is my faith, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking for where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes on you This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on looking for where I'm going, knowing you go there too I'll keep on looking, keep on looking, looking, looking to you I'll fix my eyes because all week I've been working on something really cool <laughs> and I haven't told anyone about it yet. So it's basically top secret, top secret. Shh. I really want to tell you guys about it. So I'm just going to have faith that you won't spoil the secret. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. You see, ever since I first heard the story of Saul, also known as Paul, because Paul and Saul are the same person, they're Saul, and how he couldn't see for three whole days after he met Jesus in a bright light on the road to Damascus, I've been thinking about what I would do if I couldn't see. It's pretty hard to fathom what that would be like. <sighs> so, I realized that if I couldn't focus with my eyes, I would want to focus with my other senses. So, I invented, you ready for this? Supersonic hearing helpers! Oh, ooh. Are they cool? They, ah, they magnify sounds like crazy. So that's why I'm whispering. Because even just a whisper basically sounds like I'm shouting at the top of my lungs. Yesterday, when I put them on for the first time, it actually kind of hurt my ears because I was hearing everything. And I mean everything. Like the squirrels across the street. And the neighbors three houses down. Joe, we're out of cereal. We are out of cereal. We need more cereal, Joe. 
but neither of those compared to the fiesta-themed birthday party that was happening on the other side of town. I have been craving cake ever since. Cumpleaños feliz. Oh. Ah, sorry, I, I couldn't keep listening to myself shout like that. Anyway, no worries. I simply grabbed a few advanced technological essentials. Ta-da! I soundproof the lab! So, we are good to go! And speaking of go, we gotta get going on the story today. Time to hear what happened to Saul after he lost his sight. <laughs> See you guys back in a jiffy. Oh, it's really dark. Ooh, it's really dark. Can we, can we have a nightlight or something? Good morning, everybody. It is story time. We are continuing on with God's big story from the Bible. Last week, we learned about Saul, also known as Paul, and how Saul had traveled to Damascus with special permission from the high priest himself to go and arrest all the Jesus followers he could find and drag them back to Jerusalem. Ooh, you see, to all of those who followed Jesus, Saul was pretty scary. You see, he had been determined to stop the people who believed in Jesus. He was determined he was going to silence them so that no more people would hear about Jesus. But when Saul was traveling on the road to Damascus, something really big happened. You see, Jesus appeared to Saul in a bright flash of light from heaven and he was blinded. And his friends had to take him on to Damascus and he, well, he was blind and he stayed there in the house of a man named Judas on Straight Street. And God had told him that he needed to wait there for instructions of what to do next. Well, there in Damascus lived another man named Ananias, who was also a Jesus follower. Ananias didn't know it yet, but he was about to become a real hero. So, God appeared to Ananias in a vision, and here's what the Bible says about what he told him. Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision, Saul has seen a man come and place his hands on him. That man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. Well, Saul was shocked and a little bit scared about going to see this man named Saul because again, Saul was scary. See, Ananias even told God that he'd heard this Saul guy was scary. That he was going out to arrest all the people that believed in Jesus. But God said to him, Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for me. You see, God had a plan for Saul too, and how he was going to make Saul into a real hero too. Nothing was going to stop Saul in his new mission. Within days, he was out teaching in the Jewish synagogues, telling everybody all about how Jesus was the Son of God, and everyone who heard him was completely amazed at this. But the religious leaders there in Damascus were not happy at all. They wanted to get rid of him. They actually wanted to capture him and kill him to stop his new mission. But some of Saul's followers had a heroic plan of their own. 
They waited till it was dark in the middle of the night. They put him in a big basket and they lowered him down the outside of the wall through a hole in the wall so he could escape. Later, he returned to Jerusalem and tried to join with all the Jesus followers there in Jerusalem. There was one little problem though. See, they were all still afraid of him. See, to the believers in Jesus, Saul was still scary. They had heard all those stories about how he'd been wiping out the believers in Jesus. And that's still how they thought about him. But luckily, one man named Barnabas, who was another Jesus follower, stepped in to help. Barnabas had already heard Saul's story and he believed it. So he took Saul to meet James and Peter and some of the other leaders of the early church. And he told them that Saul was a believer in Jesus now. He explained what was happened and that he wasn't scary at all anymore. He helped the other Jesus followers understand Saul was one of them and they welcomed him into their family. Before long, he was out preaching there in Jerusalem just as boldly as he did in Damascus. And the religious leaders there weren't very happy either. And they wanted to try and arrest him. But the other Jesus followers stepped in with another dramatic escape plan for Saul. This time, Saul traveled back to Tarsus, his hometown, to wait and see what it was God had in store for him next. See, Ananias and Barnabas were able to help Saul teach the news about Jesus to so many people. And soon the number of believers began to grow and grow. Although it must have been hard for those believers to get past the fact that they'd heard all these things about Saul. It must have been hard for them to trust that Saul was no longer scary. Why does that keep happening? <laughs> and you know, it was hard for Saul too. He knew of all people that teaching people about Jesus could be dangerous. But Saul and Ananias and Barnabas, they all knew that they could trust in God no matter what. In fact, they knew that knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. And because of that, they could do anything with God's help. You know, it's hard sometimes to do the right thing if you're afraid. Really? But just like those early believers, we can know that if we know Jesus, it can help us face our fears too. Let's pray together, shall we? Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear God, thank you so much for your wonderful stories. Thank you for being with the early believers and helping them not be afraid anymore, even though some things seemed pretty scary. Please help us to remember that you're gonna be with us even if we're scared. Help us to spread the news about you no matter what, and help us to always remember to do the right thing, even if times might be a little scary every once in a while. Thank you so much for giving us your wonderful stories and for giving us your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, today's story was full of some great examples of faith. These people we learned about showed amazing amounts of faith, like Saul, who changed his ways completely, even though he knew that teaching about Jesus could get him in big trouble with the other religious leaders. Or like Ananias, who had heard all these awful things about Saul, but he decided to help him anyways. Or Barnabas, who stood up for Saul with the other believers and helped him be able to spread the good news all over the place. The Bible is full of examples of believers just like this, all the way from the very beginning of people who trusted in God. You see, they all knew that knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. 
you and I can have faith just like those early believers. Did you know that? Sometimes God can be there with you and help you even though you're afraid. When we face scary times, we can know the Holy Spirit is with us and we can still make the right choice even if we're scared. Oh really now, I think it's getting old. <sighs> Let's finish the story, shall we? <laughs> For example, maybe you might be afraid to uh, tell the truth when you've done something wrong. Maybe you'd get in trouble. Maybe you don't want other people to think bad things about you because of what you did. Or maybe you might be afraid to give someone a second chance when they haven't exactly been nice to you in the past. We might face things like this and more, but we can always choose to do the right thing. We can know that the Holy Spirit is with us in all things so that we do not have to be afraid. Really? Okay, whoever's doing the special effects? Um, have we had enough lightning bolts yet? Oh, really? I heard that. <laughs>